first days of November this year, and uh, we give us ourselves like 15 days to get the, the money to to film the, the record film, and uh, we got the, the money, and then we had like a month and a half to get ready everything, you know, which is crazy. <laughs> but well, we we're so happy with the. Well, it is a crazy experience. <laughs> if you want to get like nervous, do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you film it, it was all shot in Spain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we shot everything in Spain and we, we were like, uh, we are from Madrid, so uh, well, well the, the, all the production were, were in Madrid. And then we, uh, Spain is very. Um, because of the money that we used and, and some things of the cops and, and, and people that were in the, in the movie that in, in, the, in the original script wasn't in nowhere place. But then when you get dollars or, or euros or things, then you have to put something on it. So when, when I um, have the meetings with the art department, they ask me how we are going to do a nowhere if you show the money. So then we were thinking, okay, so let's put a place that on the frontier, uh, something like Texas is for me. It's like something like that that we, we saw because you are in the middle of Mexico and, and the United States, and, and all this mix can happen there. So um, we we take that decision to, to get rid of this. No, it's interesting because uh, the film, uh, yes, it's, it's a sort of a, a full of a sort of a, the iconic places, the bar, then the bacon lab. The, uh, the anise is, is, is hard to get. At some point, you see roots, root cystics in Texas and so on. But that's interesting. That one, one of the aspects that really hold my attention why why the no man's land it seems like a wasteland? No, it's nowhere. And second, something that also contributes to this sort of uh, intention in my, in my, pers in my perspective uh, uh, mix it. Why in English? Most of the cast mm -hmm. are uh, Spanish or. <coughs> Actors from other countries, yeah. but they, that certainly they work in Spain. Yeah. And uh, why in English? Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was an, an interesting uh, choice. And, uh, like, like when I wrote the script, I, I wrote always. In, when I write the script, I always write in both in Spanish and English. And um, we didn't try to do an American. Spanish, so Spaniard uh, actors. So that's why uh, the casting director uh, told me, uh, Mario, I don't know how I'm going to find these people here because uh, principally in Spain um, people, does, doesn't, the people don't talk, don't speak English there. And uh, that's why we, we were like, okay, I, I, I understand that. But I tell to her, well, we, let's try to find like a different very, very different people from any place of foreign people. That's why we picked the Germans, uh, there, there's the Germans, Turkish, Mexican, Cuba, Mexicans, <laughs> Cubans, <laughs> Americans, <laughs> Belgians, and, and because, because the, the thing is that if we are in a place, in, 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 um, in no man's land, like you, like you said, or a nowhere place, and everybody's speaking with their, their own accent, for me it's very uh, real. 
because I, I lived in places like every stuck in the same uh, language, like me now I'm talking with English but with my accent. Yeah. And that's interesting because then you are finding like different little things in the in the characters and that that this is this is the the reason that we we pick the yeah. this so and in that sense also <laughs> with people who know me at a, a certain point I feel like as a, as an spectator sort of meandering among all these stereotypes, mm -hmm. not the stereotypes of the Kung Fu and the, mm -hmm. all these, it seems almost also like constantly quoting films, n not necessarily directly or related, but rather to films and filmmakers. And, and, uh, and, and I, I feel that sort of, a, when I mean stereotypes, you know, where I'm, I'm in, not only iconic places, but also the stereotype of the prostitute and the gangster and and do you relate to any any directors in particular, like from Spain or, or Latin America or the United States that you can? Yeah, you know? maybe maybe um, and some of the things uh, come with for my influence, and uh, I'm, I, I'm a half Italian, half Venezuelan, and then I have lived in Spain, I have lived in New York, I have lived in Paris, I have lived uh, a lot of places, and then you find like um, this this. Stereotypes that go in the movie. I saw them in the, the real life, and and it's a, it's that's incredible, incredible for me, because I'm not building the characters like a comic book. Maybe it looks like a comic book, but those comic books characters I found it in, in the real life, <laughs> and it's in, it's very interesting when you find that the bull, the bull guy. I knew a bull guy like that, and and it was like, yeah. how can you be real, right? How can you be real? And it's very very interesting the the way they. they the way they 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 uh, they are. So uh, I think that, that this is one of the things that make me uh, make the, like this universe uh, around. So you are feel for for being a realistic movie somehow. Well, yeah. No, I because to mention, I, I must say that uh, Mario told me in a previous interview yeah. where we met mm -hmm. the first time to talk about this project and this uh, experience. He mentioned that uh, that plan has to change. 20 pounds in weight, so yeah, you can see it's not the same. <laughs> it's it's home, weeks. But it's <laughs> the same pump that we are seeing there in the screen. And it's also that like he, Mario, insisted several times in the realistic in a sense that he has to also learn martial arts uh, in Mexico. But is that something else? Well, the guy.
see the the character in, in, in his eyes and he's speaking and he's telling something but in real life I think that that, that happens too that people is talking but when you watch their eyes uh, real when you watch real eyes they are telling another thing so um, photography had that in, in the film and for me it's natural to do both things uh, natural it's, it's impossible for me to tell someone do the camera like that or put that light there and so I, I have a, a, a crew that works for me always and make me make, make easier the, the work as, as a cinematographer in, in, the, in the film but I think that always I'm trying to tell visually the film first and then the dialogue and that's why I, I, I feel that uh, Mario it's interesting you're saying that because I was struck by this And for me, like the third thing when I'm telling a story is what they say by saying in the word is more that what you feel, the sensations. And um, the sound for me is very important. And my, my, all my, by my mother, all our musicians. So um, I grew up in a house with music and sound. by the music a lot of times sometimes people when they see the, the, the film for the first time say that I, did, I didn't was too loud in, in some <laughs> point <laughs> I didn't understand what they say but it's intentional you know and the, the sound mixer of the, uh, the sorry the, the sound designer of the film um, when, when we reunite the first time to do the, the whole sound when I get the music and I'm not going to talk about this because I think that it's interesting um, when we get it same time, week by week, I, I, I give the, this 10 minutes to musicians so they can compose the piece. And before I have the first rough cut, I have the whole film with music. No sound, music. And then when I, I saw the first rough cut in, mus in the music way, I could see that it works and what it doesn't. Then the musicians, when I did the final cut, had to cut to. It's another way of work, but it was very interesting. And then they, uh, after that comes the sound and all the sound design. So it was very interesting because the sound designer, it's a, it's a great Spanish sound designer. And uh, he was like, okay, I, I love the film. I love the music. And I say, okay, and now I want to put sound up of, of all this uh, music that is on, on the movie. And uh, he, he agreed with me and how we can find these little gaps in, in the sound to play with the, with the, with the sound, of the, with the music and the sound design of the film. And that's what happens in the fights. That's um, like a very big thing in the, in the movie with the sound. And uh, that's it, it's like a, like a mix of the mm, film um, visually a license because I'm from the city. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd like to ask you about the ending of the film because yeah. uh, for, for about the last 10 minutes I was saying, okay, now he's told this story wonderfully and I love everything about it. I'm saying, but ending films is really, really difficult. Oh, yeah. And I think you ended it very successfully, but in a very different way yeah. from many neo-noir mm -hmm. films that, you know, 
could all go bad, yeah. everyone could be saved. So I was I'd like to talk a little bit about how you got to that ending and how yeah. it worked. Yeah, the thing is that um, you are uh, um, perfect when saying that in the, that uh, something is like, when you first uh, begin in the, to write a script, uh, you, you, your first script is like, oh, you, you think that you wrote your masterpiece. Always your first script. This is not my first script, this is like my fifth script of a, of a book. Itself. And then when you begin to, to write, you begin to follow like some structure that works in all the films that you like. But the thing is, if you want to crash or grow this, this uh, normal way that you are used to watch these films in the film noir and uh, the genre, uh, then I, I thought, if I, am, if I save Mark in the film, it's uh, going to be predictable because he's the hero. But the thing is that in the real part of the, of the character, he's, uh, he's not a hero. The, the, the real thing is that he had something in the past that he's not going to go um, like successful of it. He's going to die, because he already died when Tina was uh, dying. So that's his second opportunity, and, and he's happy to die for it. And. Uh, when you when you mix that with the ending, that it's uh, always a postcard in the film, like a, <coughs> like a little planting and fade up, you know, like, like we call it. It's like um, the sensation is like okay, uh, uh, when uh, people see the film, tell me always why you kill Mark. <laughs> don't, don't, don't kill the, the protagonist. No, and all the books say hey, don't do that, and then save the, the 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 hero and be happy and the happy ending. <coughs> I think that the happy ending of it is like the dream like that Tina had, the, the partner in, in the past uh, of Mark. It's like Sandy can do it. And it's like a reincarnation in some way of the, of the character of, of what he loves uh, uh, for real. And that's very interesting because um, I think that uh, the love story of the film it's not the love story between Sandy and, and Mark. It's real, the, the, the love story that he wanted, for real. And then he cannot love anymore. So he's going to die. Right? Because there is no love. There is no hope. And the only hope that he is, is what the last words of the script.